here we have a project which is a CRM project with the different phases in which we do the selection of the CRM and just to repeat the CRM is the customer relational manager. So we have a phase which is called selection, a phase which is called system integration and then we'll test that system and train the users. And then once we are ready we'll go into production. I've defined several tasks here to be able to do those different phases. You, as you can see, the different tasks are here delimited time-wise. Now, once we are in that situation, of course, that we've defined the dependencies, we've defined who are the predecessors, the kinds of relations the different tasks have between one another. Now, what we have to do is to define resources, because normally you define phases, you define tasks, then you define dependencies, you, you can also define constraints, and then is the moment to introduce resources that will do the job. To do that, we will go here up and see what we have defined as resources. To define resources, I prefer to work directly with the resource sheet. We'll look at the resource sheet, how it's defined here for the moment. As you can see, the resource sheet is defined here in general terms, meaning that in my project I know that I will have some stakeholders, PMs, will be project managers, so I have PM1, PM2, I might not use PM2, but I've defined them, and then I have three developers, and I have also three IT integrators, and I have about five users, two accountants, and two additional consultants. These are the resources I have in my project. So when I define one of those resources, I will here admit that I have to add a consultant. Like that it will be general for any resource, just that you see how we proceed. So I will add consultant 3. 3. Now you see the kind of resource, it can be defined either as work, material or cost. So for me it's a work material, it's a, it's a work cost and here I will put the rate. I decided to put 200 as a rate so you do that by keying in 200 and then a slash and then the unit. It could be per day, it could be per hour. 200 is here per hour. So for this it's, it's a slash H. Once this is done of course that the resource is defined. I could as well, as you see, there is a second column here, which is the overtime. So if resources are going to do overtime, you can increase the rate or define the same rate. So I will do that just for the developers and their rate once um, they are working with additional um, overtime will go up to 110 per hour. I've done it for the three developers, the integrators, um, there it might go up to 125 per hour. So as you can see, when I have several resources with the same rate, I can just easily uh, enter the first one and then just prolong to the other ones. So this is just the, the example. Users, I'm not sure that we'll give them some overtime anyway. And accountants, not. Um, maybe fix them with the consultants, because there it could happen. So um, I would put 250 per hour if they do overtime. So with that, we, we are set. And we have our correct times entered uh, for each hour of our uh, work resource. 
So now let's see how we can attribute those work resources to, um, to the tasks. For that, I go back to the Gantt view. And you see that uh, among the columns here, I don't have the visibility about the resource. Now, by extending it, I got the visibility about the resource. So I'm going now to add the resource at the easiest task, the lowest task, to be able to, to define it there. So we'll see that here, the requirements, they, they will be done. And you see here that you get the complete list of the available resources. So I will say this is a task done by the, the project manager in our case. So like that, PM1 is added. And solution evaluation, I will say OK there. I may, might need uh, a consultant. I might also need uh, one of the developer, one of the integrator, and maybe also the project manager. So that, that's it. So you see that we got here the list of the people that will participate during that evaluation. Solution choice. This will be a bit different. Um, I say that uh, we again have the consultant. We have the developer one, integrator one, the project manager, and maybe one of the stakeholder and maybe one of the user will participate in the, the decision making. So this has been added also. And then system purchase by itself, I will say, okay, this is the, the accountant. It's really the task of the accountant to, to do that with maybe uh, the project manager. They have to fulfill all the, the elements to, to be sure it's uh, well done. Now the, the server installation by itself will be done by uh, one of the developer and oh no I won't take a developer I will take an integrator for that okay so an integrator and then the application it's still the task of an integrator so it will be the same Then in the, the test phase, test of the, the user interface, this will be the task of integrator 2. And the functional tests will also be the task of integrator 2. The training, for the training, then we'll have there um, maybe something like uh, four representatives of the users and uh, why not also to to add uh, integrator two with this we've defined the um, the resources that will work on the different phases now in production, I will also say that there it's then again the role of integrator one. Now we have the, the two weeks of um, the, the production run. This is also the role of integrator one. Project closing will have their um, the, the consultant, developer one, integrator one, the project manager, and the stakeholder, and the representative from the user, for example. With that, 
we've defined all our needed resources for this project, um, working resources for the moment. So we can already see that certain things are appearing here, saying like uh, this task is over allocated to integrate to. So we'll see later on what's going on with those things. But at the moment we can say that we saw till here allocations of the resources. So now the question we can ask is what about the costs? So to look at the costs I will insert a column here and I will go and I will look at the costs. I will simply choose here cost and we see all of a sudden for each task the the amount that was required and then the total cost of the complete project so this is the way to start and to have a first look at uh, resources with the additional costs they include on the project and the cost evaluation of the project itself. So far we've done what I call adding a resource, we looked at the costs and we saw that we could attribute easily resources to tasks. Once this is done we requested to look at the costs and the costs were calculated for us. So far, so good. So we'll look at another point in a further tutorial.